to the Abu Dhabi International Book Fair. Okay. <laughs>Welcome to the Abu Dhabi International Book Fair and this is the final session on the final day of this year's festival. I'm Amandeep Bangu. My work with the BBC first brought me to the UAE and fast forward I am now a very happy Abu Dhabian. I'm very happy to be part of this book festival and celebrate the power of books. We've got a wonderful session for you this evening to really round up the best of the festival. With me here on the stage I'm very happy to welcome French and Egyptian writer Gilbert Sinway. He's a creative extraordinaire, classically trained guitarist. We're going to get into a lot more of his career in just a moment. But to begin with, I'd like to say that we are inviting him to join us today because his new book, The Falcon, celebrates the UAE's founding father. We're going to delve into the delights this book offers in the course of the next hour. It's fair to say that understanding the UAE is impossible without understanding the life of the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan. Because of his deep religious faith, his vision, his determination and hard work, his generosity at home and abroad, and the way in which he devoted his life to the service of his people and the creation of a better world. All of this is celebrated wonderfully by Gilbert in this fictionalized biography. Now, I'm going to admit to you, this is a version in Arabic, which I'd love to say I've had a chance to read. I'm afraid my Arabic is coming along very slowly. So Gilbert has kindly agreed to take us all on a wonderful creative journey into his storytelling techniques, his ambition, and his inspiration behind this book. So less of me and more of you now, Gilbert. Please um, do give us an insight into what inspired you to first write this book. Well, um, it's a long story, actually, and we don't <laughs> have very much time. I came to Abu Dhabi 25 years ago, and uh, at a book fair, actually. And, uh, of course, honestly, I 
didn't know anything about this area. And people started to talk to me about Sheikh Zayed. And honestly, I didn't know anything about Sheikh Zayed. So I was in, interested, but not too much. Then I came here a second time, third time. And uh, each time I was here, each time I saw his picture, and I started to really wonder, who is this man? And I came back to Paris, and you know, as a writer, I'm always very intrigued, interested by special people, uh, especially in this area. And the more I read about Sheikh Zayed, through biographies, etc., I discovered someone who was completely astonished, completely different, a an exceptional man, honestly. And I don't know why I thought this is a character of a novel. It's a such, such a special character that he, he could be the hero of a novel. Then one day I was uh, in Bahrain and I was talking to my uh, um, Arabic publisher and I told him, you know, I, I wonder, I would like very much to write a novel on the late Sheikh Zayed. He said to me, a novel? I said, yes, because biography, there are thousands of biography, but this man inspired me as a hero. And I never heard of my publisher. And after seven months, eight months, he called me in Paris and he said, look, I talk about your project to someone called Dr. Ali bin Tamim, who is actually among us. I know he's very modest. He doesn't like to appear. And he spoke to Dr. Ali bin Tamim, who said, this is an interesting approach. And I came to Abu Dhabi, we met. He asked me how I was going to write a novel. Uh, lots of questions, etc. And he said, go ahead, try to write it. And uh, he helped me a lot. And I came here, I met Zaki Nusebi and other people. I had access to the archive, to documents, to books, to CD, the speeches of Sheikh Zayed, something like 20 CD. And, um, well, I was fed by Sheikh Zayed during almost one year. And during this year, I was wondering how I was going to write a book. And one morning, I don't know, came from God, I started to write at the first person. I, I wrote, I, Sheikh Zayed, which was terribly risky. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I can't explain. I, I, was, I, I really felt, I'm not exaggerating, I felt in love with this man. I really felt completely in harmony with him. And it was not difficult to write. I thought before it would be extremely difficult, and it was not. It was for me like a dream. And this is how the book was born. That's such a wonderful journey that you've taken us all on. In respect of the voice that you took, the first person voice, Sheikh Zayed's voice, um, you mentioned it was a risky venture. Sometimes the best creative ideas are the riskiest. If I can just ask you right from the outset, what were some of the, um, the, the, some of the concerns you had writing about Sheikh Zayed as a non-Emirati? Well, you know, in this area, you have no great man. I was born in Cairo. I am Arab too. I'm French and Arab. I always say I'm like the cappuccino. You cannot separate the milk from the coffee. So when I was writing, I was feeling Arab and I was writing in French. What amazed me in the life of this man is his vision. We ha you have, it's very rare to have a great man who has a vision. Maybe in France we can compare it to the Gaulle, you know. 
when France was down, we lost the war. Everybody said it's finished. And one man woke up and said, no, it's not finished. And this man was the goal. And for me, Sheikh Zayed, in a certain way, was a, had a vision in this area. In the 60s, he had a vision. He, he saw his city. And what really impressed me is his vision of education. You know, education in the Arab country, I'm sorry to say that, is a disaster. And this country is an example. School for girls, school for boys. He's, he was obsessed by educating people. And you know, there's a f philosopher uh, called Ibn Rushd. Ibn Rushd used to say, when you are ignorant, it leads you to hate. And hate leads to violence. So when you are educated, there is no hate. You understand other people. People are afraid of, people, of things they don't know. The thunder, anything they don't understand, they're afraid of. And they can be violent. And Sheikh Zaid, I think, felt that. So education, the farms, irrigation. And he succeeded in doing what we, we couldn't make in Europe. We made a common market, but we still have no army. We have the euro, okay. We still have no common politic. So he, he succeeded to make 50 years ago, what you, we, are, we are still trying to make in Europe after 70 years. So how can you not write something mm. about this man? It's impossible. And I must say, I'm sorry if I'm too long. When I was talking in France with French people, English people, about Sheikh Zayed, I must say he was quite unknown. They, you know, they have an image of the Emirates which is completely wrong. They see buildings, they see oil, they see palace. Mm. They don't know anything about this country, anything. They only criticize or they have a superficial uh, uh, analyze. So uh, I felt that it was almost important for me to share, to transmit who is Sheikh Zaid to other people and we hope it will be translated in English and now it's preparing in Greek and Italian and all the press in France that talk about the book were surprised they told me this man existed really you, you didn't invent him so I was very proud of that well I'm very excited to hear there's going to be an English translation because I can't wait to read it in English um, and I think you're absolutely right Gilbert to focus on the principles that Sheikh Said was um, such a progressive, um, such a visionary and I'm wondering whether you would almost consider having an epilogue for your book in the sense that I imagine the book in first person takes his timeline of his life but for a moment if you had to return to being in first person writing from Sheikh Zayed's voice, what would he think of the UAE today? Because of course this festival, it comes to you in the 50th year celebrating the anniversary of the founding of the nation. So this is such a fitting session that we have for our festival. Um, and I'm wondering if you had to imagine what Sheikh Zayed would make of the UAE in his 50th year. You, you, you ask me too much. <laughs> I, 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 We've I, got time I, and the <laughs> audience is very interested in I, your answer. I already <laughs> took a risk. To, to take his voice in writing this book. Anyway, I, I feel that he would be very proud. I feel that he see that his heritage is continuously an education. Uh, look, you have the Louvre, you have the Guggenheim, you have the Sorbonne, and all this is, is a dream of Sergeid who is continuing. Nothing has changed. Uh, so I think he would be very proud of his son and his country. Absolutely, and if I can just add to that as someone... Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, yes. There is something very important I want to say. It's about tolerance. This was his obsession. Christian, Jews, Muslim. For him, it was Ahl al-Kitab, the, the uh, son of the book. 
and this is an example because I see that in country otherwise uh, I see Egypt where we have the uh, Akhwan, Muslimin and all this tension uh, this hate this violence and thanks to his mind to his view of tolerance you don't have that here you have Jews look the peace that has signed with Israel all this is a sign of tolerance and it is extremely important absolutely and I think that's a really valid point that you make that you can provide uh, a greater context in analyzing the UAE as someone who is Egyptian absolutely. Egyptian born I know that you moved to Paris in 1968 so yes, you have that, long time ago. you've got that wonderful contrast of being able to look at the world through both the Western and a more um, Arab world vision as well. And I would just like to add, as someone who's lived in Abu Dhabi for the last few years and been, been involved and hopefully been able to contribute to wonderful festivals like this, that the pluralistic society that was a vision of Sheikh Zayed Absolutely. is actually a reality now. I come from, my home city is London, celebrated as being multicultural, multinational, and it has some of its problems, of course, but every nation does. But the multinational, um, just the makeup of the UAE is phenomenal. We've got close to 200 nationalities living side by side being able to worship side by side, the tolerance, the safe haven that the UAE is. The latest Arab youth survey, the findings, they just were astounding to show that across the Middle East, the UAE is a beacon for Arab youth. Absolutely. They want to come and live here for employment, for the safety, for the possibility to contribute. And earlier today, again, because the festival has been brilliant, we've been able to celebrate fictional and factual storytellers and we also had the diplomat his excellency omar gabash here and he was talking about the idea that emiratis are welcoming they always have been of uae residents to actually be a part of society to contribute to that vision so this very inclusive nature the fact that me coming from Britain with Indian heritage, you, Egyptian, French, here being able to celebrate with our Emirati brothers and sisters. I think that's also a beacon that, of a promise of hope for the Absolutely. future. Absolutely. Fantastic. We agree on that point. <laughs> now, Gilbert, you've been very good because you answered my questions and we've delved straight into your book. But I just want to take a step back. Because, of course, you are a celebrated writer. The reason why you were backed in the idea, it wasn't just someone saying, I want to write about the great Sheikh Zayed. It was you saying that you wanted to write about him. And the reason why your idea got backed and you were given this wonderful access to the archives, the research, the people, to do your first-hand research, um, is because you have this wonderful um, catalog archive of books under your own belt looking through the your biography dozens of books and am I right in saying that you've written a Th lot 35 of th 35 <laughs> describe for us if one had to generalize 35 are we talking novels are we talking historical work uh, factual give us a, a little bit of a, a, a journey through your writing history you have the time? <laughs> <laughs> I think we do. You have the interest. <laughs> Look, I, I, I always say I don't choose my subject. And if you take the example of Shazaid, I didn't choose it. It's, I came here, I saw his picture. So most of my novels, the subject comes to me and he takes my hand and he said, write about me. I have to ask you a question there because this is so curious. When you hear a writer say this, what if an idea tugs you and you're like, no, go away, I don't want you. Can you do that as well? Or do you, are you a prisoner no, to the idea? it never <laughs> happened, you know, because when the idea comes, you don't say no. Really? Uh, In case the next I, idea I always come. say I'm just a transmitter. I transmit things that comes. Uh, I can't explain. Uh, look, I wrote, uh, I'm not Armenian, and uh, one day I was watching TV a long time ago, and I heard that the Turkish wanted to apply to the common market. They were candidates. And apparently things were starting to the discussion between Turkey and France and, and England, etc. And I was very shocked. 
I said, come on. In 1915, the, the Turks were responsible of one million and a half dead. One million and a half Armenians were killed in 1915. And nobody asked for an apologize, a little apologize, saying, okay, we are sorry, we, we did a mistake, it's history, nobody. And I was very shocked. And I said, I have to speak about the Armenian genocide. I have to. People have to remember what happened. And this is how I wrote a book about the uh, Armenian genocide. And it's always like this, you know, most of the time I hear something, I have a discussion, and in the night it works. And I wake up and I say, okay, I'll take it. This is how it works. That's why I wrote a, a novel that our, um, the action is in Spain, in Scotland, in um, almost everywhere, Argentina, and of course, Arab country. And most of your books, the 35 books, they are novels or? 90% uh, are novels and I, I wrote biography on Gandhi, uh, uh, lots of people. Such a varied and diverse um, interest yes, and a breadth yes. of interest that you have. And I think this have. is life, absolutely. Yes. You have to be interested about it. You have to be open. You have to be like, you know, accept the, the world as it is and accept the gift that life, life gives you. And would you say that you were equally open when it came to the fact that you have um, your illustrious career, of course, spans literature? screenwriting, music. Again, were you open to these influences coming in your life or were you seeking that path deliberately? No, you know, I, I had during, during uh, almost 25, 25 years, I, I, I studied music, of course, classical music in Paris. I decided to learn classical guitar and then I became a teacher of music. And this is another life. I think I had many lives. <laughs> and uh, I think I'll go, I'm going to have more lives, inshallah. <laughs> I like your so, attitude. <laughs> so, uh, and then I started to compose music, started to write songs. Actually, I wrote a song for a singer called Dalida in, in, in France. And, and this song was translated in Arabic and it's called Helwaya uh, Baladi. And uh, I am the author and nobody knows it. <laughs> Uh, and then one day I, I start to write for, for the TV uh, uh, series. Uh, well, all this is writing. I didn't change my life actually. Going from writing songs, series, TV, scenario, script, and novels, for me this is a continuation. You're being far too modest and humble because you're critically acclaimed, internationally known through your music, your writing. So it's such a pleasure to hear you talk to us in such an open way today. I'm just going to ask for the aspiring writers and creatives amongst us. How do you take the inevitable no's that come along that journey when, of course, you've got these creative risky ideas at times or you're taking a slightly different turn in your creative path going from music to writing and of course there must have been some people who were like this project's not for me or no you have no good idea how do you overcome that sorry i didn't get exactly the how question how would you advise aspiring writers who would like to emulate your wonderful career even if you can emulate one part of your career, it'd be brilliant. But of course, part of the journey of trying to pitch a good idea yeah. is someone saying no to you. No, your idea is not good enough. What would be your advice? Continue. Never stop trying. I think, uh, you know, if you, start, if you stop trying because you have a no somewhere, you will regret it all your life. You know, I started to write my first novel when I was 37 years old. You know why? Because I was afraid of writing. I thought I, I was reading a lot of great writers, French writers mainly, English writers, and I was saying to myself, 
you will never reach half of the talent. Don't try. Continue to compose, continue to write, write for the cinema. For the... And at the age of 37, you know, it's an age where you, you say, I'm halfway of the voyage. So I said to myself, imagine if something happened to you and the trip finished tomorrow morning. You will regret all your life that not trying. And I think it's very important. Well, thanks God I had success. Thanks God I wrote my first novel. It was accepted. But it's not the usual way of life. The usual way of life is failing. Is uh, people who tell you no, people who tell you, no, it's not good, you think it will work, it won't work. You have to try, you have to continue, you have to persevere. It's very important. I think that's really good advice and it's very inspiring to continue. And when you, um, just looking through your biography of your 35 books, Egypt is a theme that comes up a lot. Did you feel, once you'd started writing, that returning to your birthplace and returning to the stories there, that was a way for you to rediscover your own past, your own adolescence? Look, I left Egypt when I was 18 years old. So how can you forget? It is still my, my land, even if, if, if France is my, my, my second land in a certain way. And uh, in my mind, I, I really mix them. But Egypt was important for me, and Egypt in, inspired me. You know, when you live in an Oriental country, Arab country, you, have, you are inspired by the music, by the language, by the color, by the color of the sky, by the, the perfume of Yasmin. And this is in me, even if I left 50 years ago. But uh, I think it's... Egypt inspired me in, in a way that uh, maybe if I was 100% French or 100% Eng English, maybe my writing would have been different. How different? What, what do you mean? I think that there is an oriental way of writing. It's, it's, it's in your blood. You, you don't write the same way when you come out from Cambridge, born in London, than when you are born in an oriental country, grows in a French or occidental country. This mixture plays a certain role in the way you write. Mm. I'm convinced. Even if you read my books, and apparently well written, and it's in good French, I know that between the lines, there is something oriental that I feel when I write. Like music, music, when I write, I need a rhythm. I need to feel a musical uh, color in the sentence. All this is a part of ADN. And to stay in this space for a moment, when you mention Oriental, you're talking about the same concept that Edward Said, his, crit his critique that the Orientalism of the West, the way the West potentially, his critique is, looks at the East, the rest of the world, um, through a Western prism. And your inspiration comes from the fact that by birth, by connection to a place like Egypt, you can see the world through different eyes yes. to someone. Yeah. No, no, I can, I can sympathize with that. I'm born and bred in London. My parents moved to England over 50 years ago. So they're, you know, Indians who have become British. But having that connection to a place like India and its multiculturalism means that when I moved to the UAE, I already had this affinity to the Middle East. I knew that there were certain things that overlap with those cultures. There's certain understandings. And of course, there are certain um, issues that all cultures and societies need to work through. But it wasn't, I didn't come just as a British born person. I also had that. So I, I can relate to what you're saying that actually having that influence in your life from a very young age, an authentic influence, can help of course. creatively, etc. And which, of course, is coming back to the focus of our session today. 
Um, perhaps this is what links into your early fascination with someone like Sheikh Zayed. I know that you mentioned earlier that um, being born, brought up in the Arab world, there aren't that many leaders that you thought were aspiring, that you wanted to aspire towards and were inspiring. But Sheikh Zayed, when you came across him first, yes. he was someone who stood out for you. Absolutely, and, and it was, as I told you, it was not difficult for me to, to try to enter in his, in his soul because maybe I, I, as, as a German or as a British, I wouldn't have been able to have the feelings I had when I was writing. And it's because I have Arab blood that it was natural for me to, to write uh, and speak about him. And give us a, a little bit more of an insight into this wonderful research that you were able to do that's been provided the access to the archives, the CDs of um, audio CDs of speeches, Absolutely. behind the scenes footage. We, of course, living here in the UAE, we've seen some of the newspapers this year print some of the wonderful photographs and they're just so brilliant. But of course, you got to see so much more than the rest of us. I'm jealous. Oh, not, not much more, but I've digged. <laughs> And it took a year, you said, to do the research. I mean, probably much yeah, more. Yeah, it was yes. a year. And, 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 and I must say that in, in Paris at the National Library, we have a lot, a lot of documentation. And I went also to the British uh, Library in London because of the impact of the English in this area at that time. Uh, and uh, there too, I found interesting uh, uh, information. And when it came to writing this book as a fictionalized biography, can you give us an idea as someone who's written novels, um, biographies, what's, what's the main difference? What are some of the constraints in writing a historical-based book to, for example, fiction that has no rooting in a real, real life story? Well, you might be surprised. It is a fiction, but it is not a fiction because uh, the, 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 the part of the fiction is that I make him speak. But the facts, uh, his life, his accomplishments, the people he met, uh, his political view, his generosity, how much this man gave, it's unbelievable. I, I mean, you know, a, a French journalist told me once, well, it was easy because he had the money. I said to him, how can you say such a stupid thing? Because we had leaders in the Middle East who had the money. We had Saddam Hussein, we had Gaddafi, we had people who had money. And look at their state, look at the people, look in what misery they live. So it's not the fact that you have the money, it's how do you use it that counts. And I think the way Sheikh Zayed used his money was an example for the whole region. And the fact that we have the, the call for prayers coming at this moment, I think it's quite timely with you referring to that idea of the humble generosity that um, was the principles there. Um, I know that you've spoken about this challenge of writing something which is based inspired by fact, by historical fact, and how sometimes the author can feel a great responsibility to not deviate. Tell us about that balancing act that you have to go through. It's very difficult. Mm. The only thing I can tell you it's very difficult. <laughs> the balance has to be, you have to be very careful, especially when you of course. write about. And to be clear, what we're discussing here is this idea that if there was an incident, you can't simply talk about there was an event and today I'm going to write it in this way. You need to make sure that you are being true to the facts. Of course. But of course, telling a story. Of course. You, you can't just list. So I think this is the balancing act that, of course, you're having to navigate. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you cannot lie. You have to be honest with yourself and honest with the reader. Because, you know, sometimes people read historical novel. Mm. It happened to me to read some. And there are such errors, such mistakes. And the people who read it believe it. 
And so the writer has a huge responsibility to not transmit a wrong information, especially in that case. And did it make you think um, other writers have gone through this experience, they're novelists and then they write a historical book and then they go back to novel writing because they just think writing a historical novel can be, it has all those demands. Did it make you think you want to write another fictionalized biography or did you think, no, <laughs> it's too challenging? <laughs> You know, why not? I don't know. You know, as I told you, subjects come to me. So maybe I would probably do that, yes. <laughs> but I know what you mean. I mean, we've all watched Hollywood movies, movies from other industries, and they depict a scene from a war, or they depict a scene of history. And we almost take it as this is the truth. But of course, it's not always the truth. So there is a great responsibility that artists have, that creatives have. Absolutely. But at the same time, what we're acknowledging is that if you made this a complete book of just facts, then nobody wants to read that. Exactly. They, don't want, they want to engage with a story. They want you to take them through the life, the day, what um, inspired Sheikh Zayed, what was he eating, who was he speaking to, what he felt, you know, these kind of things are the things, these are the elements that are the ingredients of life. That's why I wrote a novel. Yes. I wrote a novel because I wanted as much people could read about his life. Because in Europe, you can find books about Sheikh Zayed, but it will be in, uni in universities, maybe, or in libraries, or, you know, national libraries, things like this. I, I didn't want that. I, I wanted that the, the normal people, the average people who knows nothing about this area, learn, understand, and this is why what I felt. I felt like transmitting uh, something. That's why the novel is a way of telling difficult things in an easy way. This is my aim. Take a difficult subject and make it at you know access to the most uh, majority of people all people are not scientists you know people like normal people and they want they want stories they want to to learn and to be distracted by by the story and i think this is a good way to transmit information you don't always have to write scientific books and tell us about you had this aim to transmit the story more widely. What's been the response outside um, the UAE and in the UAE to your book? In France, it was fantastic. We had a fantastic press. The book sold a lot. And uh, people were, honestly, if you read the papers, the articles, people were fascinating, really. And until now, I know some French people who live here and they discovered the book and they were living here since eight years, ten years, and they didn't really know who was Sheikh Zayed. And thanks to that book, I know that French people are amazed and I'm very proud of that. And here? H here, the people living here. Uh, the, 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 I, I, I don't know exactly how the book was uh, accepted here, but I think it was very well accepted. Through the echoes I have, uh, I haven't heard one critic. Well, we've certainly heard here in the festival, it's been very well received, and we have an audience here with us today. I will be opening the floor up, so maybe we first-hand reaction today <laughs> to Why the not? book. People who are intrigued, people who read it, because I think it's wonderful when you spend so much time to create something like this, to actually hear the feedback, because that's the one thing that writers have to wait a long time. Exactly. From when you pitch the idea, you research the idea, you write it, you edit it, you wait for it to be published. It's such a long journey, and it might be very different to someone who's in songwriting, the turnaround of putting a song out there and suddenly getting the reaction is much quicker. So that's my seamless link <laughs> into Gilbert's earlier career. Um, you had a song that made it into the Eurovision. Now, the Eurovision contest was just on a few weeks ago. 
<laughs> yes, the song uh, wasn't in that Eurovision. <laughs> it was a few years ago. <laughs> but it, tell me about that because I just think it's fascinating for people in the audience who don't know this. Because this is why I said right in the beginning, you're a creative extraordinaire. <laughs> so tell us about this Eurovision contest that you were part of. Yeah, it's true. I wrote a song that was at Euro Eurovision. Uh, we came number three, which was not bad. I think it's not bad. Coming from England, and Britain gets like nil point <laughs> most yeah. of the time. Were you on stage singing? Sorry? Were you on stage singing? Uh, no, never. No. I knew you weren't. I, I was just I, trying to put you I, on the spot. I would dare. I would dare. Do you sing? I used to when I had a voice, yes. And <laughs> did that help you then be a songwriter? Yes. Okay. Yes, because if you have the music, if you have the sound, if you, if you sing yourself, you're right, it's easier for you because you, you know how it works in your ear. And being a classically trained guitarist, how often do you pluck the strings these days? On a daily basis? It was on a daily basis, not anymore. You, you mean writing? Uh, um, I mean playing the guitar. Oh, uh, no. It's finished. I will play the oud now. <laughs> oh, you're there. Why? Why have I, you? I, I'm honest. I'm learning the oud. The guitar is finished. No. Oh, are you? That and that was a chapter. So I bought the oud and I found a teacher. Interesting. And when I have the time, I started to play. It's very difficult. It's more difficult than the guitar, actually. Wow. We had a wonderful um, oud player with us last night. Um, we had a poetry panorama festival here, and she was playing Shaheen, Shireen Tahami. Uh, she played for an hour, and I know what you mean. It did look very difficult. She made it very... It's very difficult. Yes. It's very difficult. You have to play every day. You have to practice every day. I don't have very much time, but it will come. Well, you're a very um, talented, multi-talented gentleman, so I'm sure by the time we next see you, you'll have another book out and you'll be playing the oud for us and you'll be here on the stage. Next time I come, I will play <laughs> oud for you. <laughs> that will be my challenge. Um, and I was just going to ask, when you did the research into Shakeside, um, knowing what you knew, what were some of the more surprising facts that you were able to discover Everything. during your um, research? Everything surprised me, honestly. Everything. So what did you have to leave out of this book? Because there must have been so much that you want more you wanted to put in. I have tried to put everything. But every step of my research, I was surprised, honestly. As I told you, you know, somebody told me uh, at a conference two days ago, do you think, she, can you put Shirzaid at the same level as the great man of history? like um, Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, Churchill, De Gaulle. And I am convinced it's just the beginning because it takes time, you know. De Gaulle was not a great man immediately. So it takes time and I'm sure that slowly, slowly in the future, the, the more Shehzad will be known, not here only, in the world, the more writers will write about him, the more film on him made. He will, people, he is a great man, but he has to access to the most um, country, the lots of countries. That's very important. I and I think a film on Shem Sheikh Zayed is extremely important, extremely important. How do you think that can be achieved? It's very difficult. But according to me, no actor can play Sheikh Zayed. So it, it could be with an off voice, you know, uh, like I wrote the book. But you cannot show Sheikh, Sheikh Zayed. Pe people will not accept it and nobody can play Sheikh Zayed. So it has to be a voice only, his, vo his voice. A voice telling the story of Sheikh Zayed you can see the facts, you can see what he accomplished, you can see the creation of the farms, of the school, etc. But I believe that if someone makes a film, it should, it should not appear. Because it will be shocking for the people. I think so. Do you know if there are any plans in development to make a film? Because of course this year would be a very good year 
for that to be happening? For, for the moment, it's just a, a dream. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe there might be some development after this evening. You might get approached Inshallah. as a film advisor. Inshallah, yes. <laughs> Have the film rights, would something like film rights be a part of a fictionalized biography? Is that... Absolutely. Have they been sold, or acquired? Or no, no, not for the moment. No. Okay, so you've heard it here. We will start the auction. What price shall we start <laughs> the auction at? <laughs> we are set up like an auction house this evening, are we not, Mr. Bear? Yes, why not? <laughs> we can start. <laughs> a good place for us to do that. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to open it up to the floor. We've also got the audience watching back home. We have our wonderful assistants to pass on the questions if they are provided from our online audience. Is there anyone here that would like to ask Gilbert a question while we have him? Please don't be shy. Would our wonderful assistants... We, we have courageous Fantastic. people here. Well, lots of people. Would you like to introduce yourself and then ask the question? Um, no, we can, you can have my mic, I don't mind. Hello, yes. Oh. Um, Dr. Talal al Janaybi, an academic um, poet from the UAE. Um, I've heard about the song, the famous song of the leader, and you mentioned that it was your word. Yes. Probably that catched my attention from the very beginning because uh, it was something that uh, really uh, enhanced. Uh, generations uh, uh, in this particular song from Dalida and the word uh, it was very simple words however these simple words have affected people and have spread uh, throughout the years so I was uh, wondering can you give us more uh, about how did you write this uh, song the, the and song. what was the background of it thank That's you a brilliant well, question thank you <laughs> as you know Dalida was born in Egypt she was uh, Brought, she, she was from an Italian family, but she was born in Egypt, and, and she, she stayed there as long as I did. I think she left Egypt when, when she was 24. Actually, she stayed more than me in Egypt. Anyway, uh, so uh, it happened that I wrote songs for her, and uh, one day uh, um, I discovered that uh, she, she sang in Arabic. Uh, Salma Ya Salama song uh, which is from the Egyptian fol folklore and um, I was with her one day and she said uh, we were talking about Egypt because she spoke Arabic not very well but she spoke Arabic and uh, she told me I miss Egypt I said oh after all these years you miss Egypt and she returned to Egypt and she made a film with Yusuf Shaheen, uh, where she was playing an Egyptian woman. So uh, I told her, look, I'm going to try to write uh, lyrics about you missing Egypt. She said, OK, try. And I wrote the, the words in French in the beginning. Then she loved it. And we, we found someone, an Egyptian writer, songwriter, who transmit, translates the song in Arabic. That's how it was born. Uh, the Arabic words was uh, originally you had the French uh, word. It was translated by someone else to the Arabic language. The Arabic language was made by someone else. Okay, okay. Because yeah. I thought it was the Arabic yeah. language. Thank you. Uh, pity, I don't. I, I and don't. When, when was that? At what year? Sorry. When was that? What year? Uh, when was it? Yes. Helwal Abayaladi, probably. Uh, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, yeah, more than that, yeah. And uh, it's a big hit in the Arab country. Unfortunately, I didn't earn a penny on it because there were no royalties. Yes, I think I've earned 12 euros or something like this. <laughs> but your claim to fame cannot be challenged. Yeah, exactly. Um, thank you, that's a very great question there. I think we have this young lady here. Please introduce yourself and ask your question. Uh, my name is Shahad Al Mazrui. Uh, I had uh, the third place in Arab Reading Challenge. Uh, my question is: When you start writing, why you choose to write uh, like a history of a man who uh, built uh, like a country, or uh, why you choose to write about history? 
First of all, congratulations. Oh, thank you. That's brilliant and wonderful question there. Gilbert. Why I choose the... Uh, to write history book. Why not? <laughs> no, I'm just asking you. <laughs> Well, because I, I, I love that. I always did that. In most of my book, it was historical. And uh, I had a hero. I had the hero of a novel. So for me, uh, well, it was natural to, to write historical book. That's, how, that's what I know. That's how I, I work since 35 novels. So for me, it was natural. Oh, Thank you. Good answer. And I didn't want, as I said, I didn't want to write... A, a, a book of history only with dates he was born he died he did that i didn't want that i i wanted to reach the heart of people and um, as maximum of people so that's why i wrote it this way and you. while you have the mic you won this competition you came third place what would you like to write like i would like a fun book for maybe for kids or uh, I would like to write for adults, like uh, um, like any book, but not about history, because I think that writing history is much difficult. So I need to search about dates or when it's born or when it's dead. So I don't like to write uh, history books much than fun books. Well, it's good to know what you want to do, so that's good, yes, and you definitely should pursue that. I think that would be really good, and the fact that you've been recognised in a competition, you. you need to follow up on that. The young gentleman next to you will be asking the next question. Very good que um, question there. Thank you. Gilbert Sunwe, I want to ask you this question and I want you to answer me with all the words that you have in your mind, okay? Okay. Are you prepared? How? To what? To answer this question. You haven't told us your name. Ah, I forget. My name is Sultan Salem and I am her twin and I become the first place in the United Arab Emirates in uh, Arab reading. Brilliant. Bravo. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. I think you should win a competition of um, speaking as well because you've got yeah. a very good voice. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm ready to answer any yes. question. Like how did you get an idea to write a history book about Sheikh Zayed? Like why didn't you take an idea of writing to a history book to another person. Why did you choose to write a history book about Sheikh Zayed, the Sultan Al Nahyan? Because as I said in the beginning, uh, when I came here for the first time and I heard about him, I didn't know anything about Sheikh Zayed. And uh, at each travel, the more I came here, the more people were talking to me about him. So uh, I started to make research when I was in France to try to understand who was this man. Everybody's talking about him. He's everywhere. So when I discovered who he was, so I decided to write about him. Thank you. That's why. Thank you. Do you feel you. like he answered your question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And very good, bold speaking. Thank you. Maybe next time you need to be here on the stage and I can take a break and sit there. Okay, next time. <laughs> I like this. This is really encouraging. The younger generation asking the wonderful questions. It means that the other generations also need to ask some questions as well. Have competition with the youngsters? No. You guys are winning so far. <laughs> did, did the gentleman in the back row, did you want to? Are you sure? Okay. But well, we still have another five minutes. And before we finish up, I was just going to ask... Oh, we have, we have an impromptu question from the front row. I like this. This is good. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Abdul Rahman Al Naqbi. I'm Mahala. really honored and uh, thrilled to be sitting in front of the great uh, Gilbert Sinway. You are one of my favorite uh, authors. I have read uh, maybe six books so far. Wow. <laughs> and honestly, I enjoyed all of them. Thank you. I was Thank one you. of the first people to read your uh, last book about our uh, late father, Sheikh Zaid, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, as you stated uh, earlier that you have gone through lots of documents on the libraries, on the archives, and uh, I'm sure you just put little info about Sheikh Zaid, late Sheikh Zaid. Uh, if you could share with us some of the stories that inspired you or you could thrill 
that you, it is not mentioned in the book. And uh, my second question, are you working in any other piece of uh, writing right now? Thank you. You mean a story that I didn't put in the book? Let me think. While you think, those are very good questions. Thank you very much. And while Gilbert thinks, have you read this book? So we wanted earlier to get a reaction. Give us your reaction as someone who is uh, from this great nation. Yes, uh, I really liked it. And the way it started with uh, speaking as he's Sheikh Zaid. And I shared this information with <laughs> Dr. Ali Tamim. And I think this piece should be taken to schools. I think the young generation, this is what I am suggesting, that such a great novel that touch uh, this. For us, we might know Sheikh Zaid, but the new generation, they need to know about the absolutely. great uh, absolutely. Sheikh Zaid. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Should be in schools, yeah, I understand. Uh, now, story I didn't write. Honestly, <laughs> you trapped me because <laughs> I don't see what I didn't mention that was any way important. Uh, but that's a really good indication. About what? The fact that you don't have an answer to that. That means everything that's worthwhile is yes, in this book. Yes, I, I, think, I, I honestly think that I've put <laughs> everything. That means now, you now, now, you know, tonight I'm, going, I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> you know? I'm going to try to remember what I didn't put. Honestly, I think I've put... 99% of what I learned anyway. Probably there are things that I don't know. Probably. Uh, maybe maybe I, I could have checked among other people who knew him personally. Uh, but honestly, I think I've put everything. Well, I would say that could be a sequel. Two? The sequel to this book could be the next Absolutely. as you say the people that knew him and the gentleman asked a second question which I think is a really good note for us to conclude on which is what are you writing or preparing or looking into next I won't tell you <laughs> can you give us an idea is it a book it's a, it's, is it it's a, a secret. blockbuster Hollywood movie is it it's a, no, it's, 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 a, it's a historical book it's a historical book but it's a secret I won't tell no you no region no nothing it's just between us nobody else will tell anyone no just i won't tell friends. you <laughs> uh, you might tell me off stage and then we will tell you as well <laughs> on that cheeky note i have to say thank you so much to the audience for your question they've been brilliant um thank you to the audience at home online watching thank you of course to the abu dhabi international book fair for the arabic language center for organizing this book fair for the AV team, the volunteers, the translators, the organizers behind this, Isabel, Carmel, Marianne, Kathy, everybody's here, Soha. There's such a brilliant team that's put this together and it's not easy hosting, putting together a festival in the middle of the world still going through a pandemic, but we hope Inshallah, next year we will have more people here joining us yes. in Abu Dhabi. It's been wonderful for me personally to be involved. And it's been such a pleasure on this last day to have the final session, to be with Gilbert Sinwe and to be with our wonderful audience here. And on that note, I just really want you all to join me in saying thank you to Gilbert and to the team here. Thank you. And thank you, Amandeep. It was very kind of you. <laughs>